Welcome back to the Charismatic Voice. Today's choice was made by our patrons, so I'm going to check out the band Yes for the first time, and I'm really excited for it. Not just because our patrons are totally awesome, but because this is going to fill in a little piece of music history for me. Yes is considered one of the pioneers of progressive rock, and I'm so excited to know what that sounds like, so let's get to it. Ooh, yeah. How many guitars do you need? That's pretty. This is, this is so energized. It's funky. Um, there's like, there's a ton that's going on. There's sort of this smoothness, yet some underlying strength in his voice at the same time. We're going to go back to the beginning. Ooh, ooh. I feel like this is going to go somewhere really awesome. I like that backing choir sound that they brought in. I think that's in the backing track most likely. Dang, that bass line. It's got some slap. Oh, so part of what makes it so interesting is the buildup and then the way that they almost like extend time when they've reached that climactic moment. Uh, we had so much fill and drive happening from the percussion and bass, especially to their just pushing it forward. Um, lots of runs happening in the organ, which I think is a keyboard that has an organ sound on it. Um, and then uh, it just suspended, essentially. Things slowed down, all of that rhythmic information slowed down, but it still was charged. And it feels like it just floated for a bit, had the suspension of time. Really cool. I'm gonna go back a little more again. All right, there's so much drive and energy here. Yeah! Love good keyboard technique. <laughs> So right here is where things slow down. I actually still have the keyboard running in the background, um, but the bass and the percussion slow down and just are coming in only on major beats.
There's like a little stretch, it feels like. And they run back into it. Oh, cool. Dude, okay. I know, I know I asked how many guitars do you need? But I should also mention like, whoa, so many keyboards. I, he's probably got a ton of well, synthesizers, honestly. Looks like he's got a bunch of really cool sounds just surrounding him, like take your pick. That's awesome. Wow, wow, oh my gosh. I wonder, <laughs> I wonder what his office looks like. Like, <laughs> does he just wheel a chair in and have normally, you know, stacks of keyboards like are there are there nine keyboards are there 15 keyboards and what are they attached to to make these sounds oh <laughs> that's cool wow Ah. Ooh. 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 This is this is fun. I feel like this is taking turns and turns and turns. I don't know if it's going around as much, like a roundabout, but it feels like it's taking turns and new journeys in various directions, which is I think why they're considered progressive rock pioneers, right? We're taking a journey through the song. Uh, I'm gonna go back a little bit more. Okay, I think this is Getty Lee, uh, who's performing right now in, in the bass, and I uh, just have to shout out this. Uh, so it's so interesting that he's not singing too, but uh, I know that their original bassist had passed away, and so I believe Getty replaced him for this performance. And um, that's this is probably because this is from 2017. This band was founded in, I think it was 1968. That's a long, long career. That's crazy to me. Crazy. And so this is their induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2017. And apparently the band had actually been divided into two parts in 2010. And they'd gone off and done their own things. And then they uh, came back together and uh, created this performance with Getty included. <sighs> That's that, that is such a long career span. Uh, for a band, that's that's nuts. That's really, really nuts. And also, especially fun because this is my first impression of them, right? Like, whoa, wow, they've been doing this a while. Okay, so let's talk about John Anderson's vocals for a little bit. Um, I I think there's a certain huskiness that's in his sound right now, which I'm guessing was still there when he was younger too. Sometimes you get that when you age. You'll become a little huskier. There'll be a little more air that enters into the sound. Um, and I, I wish that I could hear his vocals mix a little bit higher, to be honest. I'd love to hear them in a little more detail. There's something so smooth and like suave about the way he sings while also having these like stylish toss-offs. Uh, it's, it's like strangely classy. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go back a little more. I'm gonna dig deeper into his vocals, a lot deeper. Mm. I it's awesome to hear harmonies. Like yeah, there's a good spot. 
I love the mouth shape. He's really good about uh, dropping his jaw, dropping for the top. Also notice he tends to go up a little bit. Sometimes that can help singers with projection, but it's so clear that he's just so comfortable on stage. I also love the way his, his eyes are closed. He seems really absorbed into his story. <laughs> He's like, yeah, keep working. It's got some fun swing elements in there. <laughs> okay, he's like a wizard. What's his name? Um, Rick Wakeman. Rick Wakeman. His hair is wizardy. His robe is wizardy. And then the way he's pulling in all these really cool keyboard and synth sounds. It, we had organ in there at one point. I mean, it feels like he just pulled in this new sound from outer space into their entire palette of, of beautiful, beautiful tones. So... <laughs> He's a wizard. He's a sound wizard. Oh my gosh. Okay, okay. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. Is that six keyboards? Seven. I think I see. Is there one that's underneath there? I think so. I think he's got seven keyboards there. <laughs> I want to know if there are videos. I bet some of y'all have some good suggestions. Tell me about how many keyboards, like what's the maximum number of keyboards you've seen in a video that are actually being used. They can't just be there for, for looks. Gosh. I think that's another one. Ooh, it's the phrasing too in that vocal line. So I love the way this, it's partly that idea of the drive into this sort of floating suspension. He's doing this vocally too. When he has a ton of rhythm in his voice, he's really using those consonants to highlight uh, different rhythms and to give extra sort of crispness to the sound. But he's also using the consonant cutoffs and the breaths going into the next phrase to sort of hover and not let the energy drop. And that lets him soar into this longer kind of phrasing. <laughs> That's awesome. So silhouette, it's, he doesn't actually need to breathe there, right? He's doing it for an effect to, to draw us along. Mm. Mm. Really cool in the background too, you have these instruments not hitting the downbeat, but the beat right after. Again, sort of suspending us into the next part. <laughs> Man, he also has really got his pocket figured out, which is not surprising when you've been doing this since 1968. He's able to stay in exactly the right spot the whole time. So we don't have this feeling of being popped out into other areas of resonance of the voice. He just locks it in, is able to have so much consistency essentially in the sound as a result. Wow. Oh. 
feel like he's kept his voice in super good shape. Now, of course, I don't know what they sounded like when they were younger. I mean, how would I have the opportunity to listen to this band when they were younger? I don't know. Maybe somebody would have to make a suggestion in the comments and a bunch of people would have to thumbs up it. I mean, like, it's possible, wink, that that would happen. But anyhow, uh, he sounds like he's kept a lot of, like, there's a leanness to his sound still, which is really great. Sometimes when we get older, it can feel a little heavy or a little, uh, like it takes a lot more effort to create a sound often when you have vocal aging occur. And he sounds like he's still able to keep it super breezy and easy and light, yet have that drive and focus. I think there's some very, very smart vocal aging that has happened here. Look at that smile too. Ooh, cool. This is a really fun new chapter. All right, it's totally different again. And one of the things that I'm also liking about his voice is the way he's able to execute big leaps and not make them sound big at all. Not at all. It's there. I remember I had this leap in singing at one point that happened a different kind of leap, like a, a leap in my singing technique overall. It happened when I started to understand that when I'm thinking about pitches and singing, I shouldn't be thinking about them going like this and starting to think about them going faster or slower. And that's because when your vocal folds go wacka, wacka, wacka faster, they create a higher pitch and slower is a lower pitch. So a lot of times I think, uh, especially if you play piano or if you've been on another instrument where you can visualize a pitch as being higher, lower, sometimes that can, get us bogged down in our vocal technique because we'll be thinking, oh, we have to reach for that pitch. And it's much, if you think about more of a line like this and going faster or slower, that can often help get over that reaching and sort of a mental game of, oh, I have to go higher. Those are very big leaps, but they don't sound like that. Yeah, wizard. Gosh. And when I talked earlier about him being in this pocket, it's the idea he's it's he's not all forward focus. He's got some loft in the sound too, but not like as much loft or roundness as you would hear in an opera singer or a classical singer. Uh, instead, it ends up having this sort of like soothing sound back here while having the focus on front. It's beautifully, beautifully balanced overall. And one of the things he's doing to keep it in the pocket is he's also placing the consonants in that pocket it can be really easy for consonants to sort of knock us out of position. And if you think about your consonants flowing through this same focal point that you have your voice in, that can be very helpful as far as keeping it in the same resonant space. Uh, this is something that I think people that haven't done a ton of singing might not get. Figuring out, oh, how do I thread it through the same area? That's a pretty difficult and pretty advanced thing to do. So the way that he's doing it so effortlessly is I think an indication of just how advanced and subconscious this technique is now for him. Time, 
Okay, the other thing that's actually really, really impressive to me is the way he's able to keep going. It is so much more taxing on your voice when you're older. It's just like, it's like everything in your body. It doesn't refresh as quickly, right? So he's got some really great endurance that's still, still kicking in there. Man, uh, it, like it, it's a really, really good sound. That makes me wonder what it was like 50 years ago, right? Whoa. Whoa. It's beautiful, beautiful energy and phrasing in there, too. Mmm. Wow. Nice use of vibrato in there, too. This sounds, I love this interlude. It's just so magical. Okay, I think that might go partly with the imagery that they've chosen behind as well. But that's Steve How Steve Howie? He's, I just love the guitar here. It has such a natural feeling, yet such a magical feeling at the same time. It's beautiful. Maybe he needs more guitars. I really like what he's doing with it. I want to hear more of it. Hey! Wow, that was a nice top extension. Oh, okay. We're talking about something in here. Ooh, right there. Right there. So, another thing that is difficult when you're getting older with the voice is that the vibrato tends to widen. And a lot of times you can develop a, a wobble. Older opera singers especially struggle against this, how to keep that vibrato pretty lean. And vibrato is one of the more difficult things to train overall. Now in this, he sings actually quite a bit without vibrato, but when he does let it enter, it's amazingly narrow. Right, that's a really, really healthy taste of vibrato that he puts at the end of that. Man, man, I think he'd be such an interesting person to talk with about how to take care of your voice through tours and as you get older, what things need to change to just upkeep it because this is this is remarkable. Mmm, got some squeal. The song makes you want to rock out.
<laughs> cool. I, I'm loving the way that we're handing off between different instruments in here. It's so interesting. I think with progressive music, it could be easy to lose somebody. You have to take them along with you in the journey. When we hear things repeated, our brains tend to go, yeah. Like I've heard that before and they can latch onto it a little easier. With progressive music, you have to learn how to bring somebody along even though they're not getting as much repetition in the music. And I feel that the handoffs between the instruments here are done so skillfully that it really is working. Let's go back a little bit. I appreciate that again. Nice. Wow. Yep, seven. Seven keyboards. <laughs> Ooh, nice harmonies. You know, I think that there's something super jazzy about his voice. It's really interesting. Um, it's the stylization, I think it's partly the timbre too. The way that smoothness to it, the suave element. For so I wasn't thinking about that earlier when I was describing his sound, but now that I hear it, I can't unhear it. Uh, and it's such a cool sound with them this entire soundscape of rock. <laughs> I'll it's the pitch choices too that make it jazzy. It seems so effortless for him to sing up there. I, I was just crazy impressed. He keeps a really calm center. Nice. Okay, I want to go back and catch it. I was like, that part is mesmerizing. Maybe that's the round feeling, right? There's there's a a way that this like vocal lick keeps going around and around and around. You get the feeling of going around something, which is cool. Okay, we're gonna go back to it. Oh, huh. So easy for him. I love the overlapping, taking us to the next chapter. Ooh. 
and the way the pitches are going round. The three part harmony also great. And the choir backing. Oh. oh, major chord to end it all. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. This feels like the beginning of something incredible. This would be such a good show opener. I love the energy of the song and the way that they're able to transport us with that energy into different chapters. Super cool. Really just cool composition overall. And then it's fascinating to hear John Anderson's voice. Mr. Anderson. Oh, that was that was later. But anyhow, it's awesome to hear his voice and how I think he's been so smart about his upkeep. Wow. Of course, I have no idea what he sounds like um, when he's younger. So uh, just I feel very, very impressed overall. If you want to hear some more impressive patron choices, there's a playlist over here to check out. And may you fall more in love with music every day.